Hello and welcome to another maintenance blog. This one is one in a series of how we upgraded our system before installing lithium. In the last blog of this series I swapped out the old charger and replaced it with a Victron MultiPlus. In this blog I'll be swapping out the old automatic generator shore power relay switch for a manual rotary cam switch and I'll be wiring it up to the new charger. The old switch automatically switches between the generator and shore power if both are on at the same time. We never have this situation on our boat and the switch itself has been highlighted as a bit of a fire risk. So as I had to upgrade the cables from the charger to the 220 volt switch panel I thought I might as well do this job as well. So this new switch enables us to switch between shore power and generator manually rather than it automatically doing it which is simpler and safer. We were in Panama at the time so I had to order everything by freight from the US so there was no chance of exchanging them or returning them if they were the wrong things. So things like size of cables were crucial to get right. There's some really useful tables online um, which kind of shows the equivalence between the American and European systems. So the first job was trying to locate this relay switch. It turns out it's in an unmarked grey box on the inside bulkhead behind a plywood panel on the port side cockpit locker. The only way I can actually do it is with one of these bendy fellas on the end of a screwdriver. We, all he had to do was move it down about four or five centimetres and it would have been easily accessible. <sighs> it's taken me longer to get that one screw out than probably the entire wiring job. Got the rotary switch. So this is a three-way switch, so zero is off, one will be short power or gen, and two will be short power or gen, depending on which way we wire it. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't come with any instructions at all. I've gone with a boxed version because I thought I might need it, but having looked at uh, where we've got to fit it, it might not actually fit in there, so I uh, need to take a look. So it's got a few little... Uh, grommets and fixtures and fittings inside there. Because it's got no instructions what I need to do is work out which connections go to which. This terminal here is one, that one's three, this one is five, seven, nine, eleven and the same on the other side. On one the pairs on the top are connected Continuity. and on two the bottom pairs are connected. So I can make myself a little wiring diagram about how that's going to all work. The uh, generator solenoid stopped working a while ago so we bypassed it which means that that on off switch there is redundant so I'm going to use that hole I think to put the cam switch in for the generator and shore power switch over. One of the problems I've got is uh, I've got a lovely mounting box here but by the time I've put that on and it's been absorbed into the bulkhead which is about 15 mil ply uh, we're going to be burying these terminals kind of in the thickness of the bulkhead um, which could be a problem I mean I could cut a huge hole but it means I'm going to have to access everything from this side so I'm going to have to pull this out and wire it up and put it back um, which isn't very easy so I think on second thoughts I might just get rid of the mounting box altogether put some ply on the other side and mount this in a sort of a recessed hole so I've got full access to all the terminals on the other side. So now I can access the screws here and take out this outer box and uh, luckily I found a, a very thin bit of fiberglass which I rescued off a previous job and I can sandwich that in between and mount it in the recess. What I want to be careful is I keep these all lined up lose the settings for the neutral. Ah. I've uh, cut the cover plate out of that piece of fiberglass uh, and now I'm just going to mount it onto here. And put the mounting plate on there, just sandwich it in between the, uh, the casing.
double check everything's back the way it should be. The shore power and generator power into the switch I was going to retain, but everything after that I needed to replace. It's the shore power. So I can't really get a, a screwdriver in there into the terminal, so I think I'll take the whole thing off, wire it, and then put it back on as a block. Strictly speaking, we don't have to put the ground through the switch, but just to keep things nice and neat. So that's the shore power running the top one. Right. Okay, so that'll sit in there, that's the feed from the shore power, there's the feed from the generator and that'll be the feed that goes to the, the multi-plus inverter and then ultimately to the 220 volt panel. Okay, so there's the relay, the old one. So what I'll do now is just temporarily I'll connect that up to the generator side until we can get the terminal the studs to split it to run it to both and then we can switch between the two with a switch. God, it's really tight in here. Now the tricky bit, let's get it all back in place. So, is it position one now? Yeah. Okay, that's short power. Okay, that's good. Now position two. Okay, so two is generator. Okay, position zero. Lovely. Okay, thanks. So I need to make some uh, junction boxes. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just requisition the old uh, relay box here and turn that into a junction box. And also I've got a backing box for the, the cam switch as well. Um, that's not going to fit exactly, so I'm going to have to modify that as well. So uh, I'm going to put a, a hole for the generator and the shore power here. And then we've got, already got an exit hole there for the inverter cable. And then what I'll do is I'll mount the studs in there. Um, and then hopefully it should all Look really nice when it's in there. The reason I'm doing this in the bucket by the way is to catch all the plastic bits that come off it. And look I've got these kind of uh, cable protector grommet things uh, from the old box so I could reuse them. It should protect those cables quite nicely. It just protects it against that sharp edge there. Um, even though that that box is standing proud of the bulkhead, uh, these end screws were sticking out too far, so I've just taken them off with the grinder. So that's the uh, box made up. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, pre wire the, the wires in there. I'm going to put them in before I actually install the box, so it'll be easier. I've got some uh, 8 aug or uh, 10 mil three strand cable here, which I'm going to use for the inverter, but those uh, 10 millimeter square wires in there I can do with. I mean I've ordered several meters more than I need for this because this was for the inverter side um, just so I can kind of uh, obviously have a bit of redundancy but I can also cut bits off to do this this job. So I'm going to do 10 mil square or 8 org wires between the junction box and the cam switch. So I figured I need about 30 to 35 mil but I've cut off 40 so we've got a little bit of leeway. You know sometimes you make a mistake and need to cut it off again and start again so uh, Better too much than too little. The insulation on American wire is so much thicker than European, but maybe it's just to do with building regs or something like that. But anyway, this is uh, rated for outdoor use, um, which is uh, ideal for boats. So that's probably why it's so fat. It's got all these kind of uh, reinforced bits of whatever they are, cardboard. But anyway, those are the wires that we need. So I was hoping to keep it within the, the shave just for extra insulation and protection but uh, it's not having it so uh, I'm going to have to take these wires out and uh, wire them individually. I mean the insulation in them is really thick anyway so I'm not really worried and most of that's going to be hidden inside the, the um, junction box anyway. 
So it's always difficult jumping between uh, American standards and European standards or metric and imperial. But uh, I've got these um, these lugs and so these will be fitting on there like so. Just gonna cut that around just very gently onto the copper so we'll cut any of the copper strands, pull the insulation off, use a bit of force to get them off. Because these wires aren't um, the usual colouring, you know, like you'd get black for negative, red for positive, and green and yellow for for grounding or earth. And that's the other thing is the terminology is different in America and Europe as well. Uh, but anyway, um, they're different colours, so I'm going to have to put some shrink wrap on to uh, donate which one is which. So this is an 8 org 5 16th lug, uh, which uh, translates into a 10 mil square and M8 lug, I think. Yeah. So the, the lug just wants to be just right on the edge of where that uh, insulation is, like so. So I've got these crimpers uh, off Amazon because it's probably the only way to shop when you're in Panama. Um, and they're from 8 org to 1 org. And the way that you set that is by pressing in these little buttons here and they twist to the uh, relevant one. So there I've got it set to the 8 org, which you can see written on the top there, on these bits here. And the tricky thing is trying to hold it in place as you're doing it. And double crimp it for extra safety. So, so that's crimped nice in place. I can't even shift that even if I pulled it. It's better to use a heat gun for this sort of thing but uh, I haven't got a heat gun so a nice even distribution of the heat. Like that. I'm just exposing these ends for the cam switch bit. I'm just going to put the bare wire into the uh, terminals of the cam switch. Okay. So that's in place. So that'll be the top one will be the run through for the short power generator and this one will connect into there that will connect into there that will connect into there and then we've got the run through from the short power the generator and then that will go to the multi plus so then it was a matter of running the cables the first cable run was from the cam switch to the multi plus which you would have seen me install in the last blog then the multi plus to the 220 volt fuse panel So once I was sure that we had enough cable, it was just a matter of tidying it up and connecting it. Fat 
record. So I need to cut off about 80 or 90 mil, I think. This is currently AC input. So I just need to cut off about that much. I'll just get that one out of the way. Negative, just needs cutting back a bit. And that one's fine. The best spice. I don't have any more 8 by 5 sixteenths but what I do have is an 8 by a quarter inch so they're exactly the same lugs just with the uh, quarter inch has got a slightly smaller hole so I'm just going to drill this out with a 8 mil and just make it the same as this one. Let's hope we get it right this time. Solid. Wrong again. Well, you might have noticed I've got a big hole here. Um, that was pre cut before, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, a wall mounted cable tie holder here to hold it in place so it's not rubbing or pulling on that. So I'm just taking this out because uh, I need to get these um, screws here and it's really difficult. So that one goes to the panel. So this is short in and so I need to get close to the top. But first of all I need to get some mosquito spray in here because I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. check everything's okay in there it's always good when you can recycle stuff like that solid so the next thing was to modify the backing box of the cam switch to make it fit Just 
there's not enough room to actually fit the uh, those little lugs in. So I'm gonna have to shift them up under the top there. Key the edges a bit. So one of the handiest tools I ever bought for working in these tight spaces was a 90 degree angle drill bit adapter. It's not until you get into these nooks and crannies you realise how much wasted space there are on these boats. I mean, there's, uh, there's just so much dead space. I mean, there's a whole looks like a section in this corner, but even to the back there. So the final job was to connect up the 220 volt switch panel, which was easier said than done. This is the 220 volt panel. You see everything that used to come from the shore power and the generator goes through this panel. Now it's going to come straight from the inverter. All the shore power through the inverter, or if there is no AC power from the shore power or the generator, the MultiPlus will automatically draw it from the batteries. That's why it's even more essential to have a battery monitor. So I just want to get another one in place so I don't lose that entire bundle. There's so many mousing lines down there from previous jobs. Got it. I think these cable ties in here, but I don't want to spring apart otherwise I'll never get back together. So I'm gonna try to get these other cable ties ready to just deploy in their place. But it's in a really tight corner, so the best way I can think of doing that is to pre-bend them and so they kind of go around the back of the loom. Top one. So these are the looms I want to cut and these are the ones I'm gonna put in the place. The wire that I need is right behind there. So I can see it. So there it is on there. So goes to the positive, negative, and the uh, so. so. So there's the old wire. So I attached the mousing line to the old cable as I pulled it out so I could attach it to the new cable and pull it back in. So I'm going to give it quite a, a generous run so I've got plenty of play with. So that was it, a new cam switch in place, new cables in place, and the inverter was working. So the next job is going to be changing the battery cables from the MultiPlus to the battery bank, and also taking out those old AGM batteries and preparing for the new Battleborn lithium batteries. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part. Big thanks to our patrons as always for keeping us going. If you want to become a patron or you want to contribute to all these blogs, then just follow the links in the description below. And now you can also buy one of our crew shirts by following the links to our merch store. <laughs>